Hello, going to continue Link to the Past without Chot. No Chot, just going to play. Kind of was in the mood to play, but also didn't feel like streaming. And so, I will continue this playthrough. Again, the whole argument of whether or not it's the same, or good, or better, or bad, if I'm streaming or not, well, that's up to you, but... Give it a shot. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you'll find that you enjoy. But what I'm going to do now, and again, uh, this is the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past Redux, which doesn't change a whole lot. I can do this. So that's a little different. But yes, um, playing this with this quality of life update, pretty good. I'd recommend it for a playthrough if anyone here is looking to check out uh, Link to the Past and, you know, just wants like something a little different. This is a good way to experience it. I mean, even if you play the original, you're not going to go wrong. It's still good. It aged pretty good. There's not a whole lot that I think doesn't work about the original Link to the Past. But going into the menu to select your items can be a little bit time-consuming. So that's why I'd usually say, well, you know, something like this could work for some people better than others. This kid live under a bri- This kid lives under a bridge. Yo, Link, you seem to be in a heap of trouble, but this is all I can give you. How does this kid know who Link is? That's it. There, there's nothing... There's nothing else. Though, I appreciate that there's an NPC here that's its own unique sprite, as opposed to just a treasure chest. Because it could have just as easily been a treasure chest with bottle. So it's nice that they went through the trouble. Okay, so, one of the things that I'd like to do is go into the dark world. Well, I guess I could, uh, dark world, hmm, I'm trying to think of where a close by dark world portal is, because I have to get to, to the village. Oh, hammer. Right. Hammer right over here. Okay. So there's a couple different things I can do right now. Um, the bird. For example, we can get bird. Some refer to bird as weathercock. Those people are just... Correct. I've talked about this while playing, but there's like a, an illustrated graphic novel that covers uh, Link to the Past events with like yeah, it's got, like, a nice art style. I have the book. And... I remember... My cousin had it, and I would... One of my cousins, one of my many thousands of cousins... Had it, and I would read it. And I was like, why isn't this in the game? But it's... You know... It's, like, kind of a... An embellishment on a number of things. But it's really well done. And... I'd recommend it, if people haven't checked it out. I guess you just type Link to the Past graphic novel. There's like a birdman named Rome. Not King Rome. Just some dude named Rome. 
similar name, but, you know, different. And, uh, it's pretty great. But I guess one of the things I always loved about games like this was the ability to use your imagination and fill in the blanks. But then also the official artwork would sometimes help you out with that. After wandering into this world, I turned into this shape. I enjoyed playing the ocarina in the original world. There's a small grove where many animals gathered. I want to see that place again. I buried my ocarina there with some flower seeds. Will you try to find it for me? I will lend you my shovel. Good luck. After... oh. I didn't just get two shovels, did I? That noise for going into the dark world and light world is so fucking good. The effect is good, the noise is good. There we go. So yeah, this is originally called a flute. It's like... Wait a minute. <laughs> it's not a flute. I was like, why is this flute big? Why is it engorged? Thank you, Link, but it looks like I can't play my ocarina anymore. Please take it. If by chance you go to the village I lived in, please give it to a tired old man you will find there. Oh, my mind is getting hazy. Please let me hear the sound of the ocarina one last time. Saddest moment in all of video game... There's a tree now. What? What's this? Why am I facing? <laughs> what is going on here? Okay, I guess the Redux version also added a new glitch or two. Tree fella. Rip tree fella. Okay, so... Normally now, you know, you'd want to do dungeon number two. This fucking weird alien dude. Honestly, that, that could be an emote. If we could fit that into an animated emote, I would try to get that. He just hits a drum. He just hits a drum. So weird. Oh, oh God. Believe it or not, I've compl I've done that mini game very well <laughs> on occasion. I don't think I have the patience for it right now, but... Oh, right. All these weird, dark world denizens. That was an alien, this is a nose. Dig. I 
I guess it's random. I mean, there's supposed to be a heart piece here, right? Pretty sure it's totally random, but, um... I'm almost positive there's a heart piece. Played this game 25 million times. But details still escape. Double check that there's a heart piece. I'm almost positive, but I could be wrong. Link to the past digging minigame heart piece. Okay. Yeah, there's one. Got it. Oh, wow, that was a last second heart piece. Okay. Well, before I go to the weathercock... Oh wait, no, I'm gonna go to the weathercock, yes. So this kid's ocarina... ...has some magical properties. I think it's cool that... ...there's an ocarina in this game. And then it would later become, like, a major... ...plot point. Including the name of the game for the first 3D Zelda. Like, I wonder if they just... Well, there was an ocarina in the other game, you know? Oh, this is my son's ocarina. Did you meet my son? Where is he? Is he all right? Oh, I see. Well, I can tell what you want to say by the look in your eyes. Would you keep the ocarina? Will you play its sweet melody for the bird in the village square? I beg of you, please. My son would probably want it this way. But still, I wish I could see him once more. This game reminds me of Growl. It's funny, though, even though I played this game a lot as a kid, and, you know, obviously there's no random elements, really. Minimal. I tend to... ...enjoy subsequent playthroughs. Even knowing, like, generally what to do. And I was way better at, like, going through this game quickly. And knowing all the tasks and steps when I was younger. And the reason for that is... I just played it all the time. And like I said, even though I kind of know what I'm doing, for the most part... It doesn't really bother me. It's still fun. Apples. 
always thought that was interesting. Just randomly get help from apples. Like, I get why people like to speedrun games. It just becomes kind of a comforting thing. Like, okay, do this task, do this task, how fast can I do this one? Anyway, this is the earliest you can get the third level sword. And when I discovered this as a kid, because I, I remember... It was one of those things where I put two and two together. I'm like, wait a second. I might be able to get the, th the level three sword right after I get the hammer. Not right after. As you'll see, I have a little bit of work to do, but... Quit bothering me and watch where you're going when you dash around. Fucking talking trees. But this was like uh, my version of a sequence break. I'm sure other people have done so as well, but... Get out of your thief. Strange mouse creatures. Even in the dark world, there's a picture of Mario. Hario. Ooh. This is Thieves' Village. Or Village of Thieves or something. Meanwhile, Link is the only thief here. Okay, well that mouse, blue mouse thing is a thief, but... Small mouse? I, I don't even know what these creatures are supposed to be. One thing I never really understood is why do these guards have, like, lollipops instead of weapons? Also, bone chickens. There's just 600 rupees just sitting around. Village of Outcasts. People without rupees are not welcome here. Village of Thieves, where was I getting that from? My brain was too mushy to play this game when I was a kid, though. So I needed help. My cousin, like I said, would help me and we would play it together, but then there were times where I'd just play it on my own. It's like when you try not to play a video game that you get, because you don't want to, like, make too much progress without your co-op friend. Well, this is what we played. We, we played... this was the co-op game that we would just switch controller, like, every now and then between us. But, yeah, there was no... There's no guide, not that I had, so I had to, we had to just figure it out. There we go. Made out like a thief. I forgot to play for the weathercock. Oh wait, no, I got the weathercock. So, this is Thieves' Den. That's why I was thinking it was the Village of Thieves. I had to pick, I had to put that together. I had to figure that out. But yeah, this dungeon was exciting because I knew that I was going to get the good sword. But frustrating because it kind of is a little bit of a pain in the ass of a dungeon. 
not too bad as I, you know, as I'm older, but as a kid, like I said, I struggled with this game in mushy pea brain state. Music is very sinister. Not crazy about the sword beam in this game. Just the effect of it, and what it sounds like. I've been bunnied, 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 bunnerized. Um, the reason I'm not really a huge fan of it is Zelda One. You shoot sword straight ahead, and it has a kind of a cool sound. In this game, not so much. Big key already. That sounds like a Wizrobe attack. The Master Sword. When you shoot. Not that it sounds like a specific Wizrobe attack. It sounds to me in my mind like what that would sound like. Okay, so now. So my plan is to get the sword upgrade, then come back to the dungeon. Actually, I probably could just... Uh, I probably could complete the dungeon. I mean, it's it's not that hard, even with the level uh, 2 sword, what, Master Sword. Basic Master Sword. But it helps make Dungeon 2 and 3, Dungeons 2 and 3, a little bit easier. Having a more powerful weapon. Some would say too easy, but that's the point of sequence breaking. And then you feel like a fucking genius, because you're like, there's no way they intended this. And then you find out years later, then, you know, that, uh, like Metroid, Super Metroid. It's like, yeah, no, that was all, not all of it, but a good chunk of that was baked in. Giving the player freedom to experiment and try different things. And also, like, play the game how they want, I think is a great thing. Probably the reason why Breath of the Wild was so successful in giving the feeling that it did, despite it not being a traditional Zelda game, and, you know, there's people that don't love it. Weird that, okay, so I saw the, the cycle of Zelda is game comes out, everyone loves it. And then, well, okay, no, no, no. Zelda game comes out, and then people are like, oh, the previous one was, was better. Okay, so let me try this again. <laughs> I read an interesting take on the cycle of Zelda game releases. Right. Okay. 
So game comes out, people bitch and moan about it and say that the previous Zelda game was better. Oh, Twilight Princess was better than this one. Wind Waker was better than that one. Majora was better than that one. With Breath of the Wild, the cycle reversed to the point where everyone loved it on release, and now people are trying real hard to justify why it was poop, even though it's not. That's the take that I read. Is there accuracy to this take? Uh, not really. I think it's a little hyperbolic, but it's kind of... I have seen more and more people shit on Breath of the Wild. At least I think I have. Maybe I just didn't see enough of it when it came out. And I think people who are, like, really die-hard Zelda fans have their issues with the game's dungeons. And that's kind of the issue with it, right? There are really very minimal kind of dungeons. There's only four of them, and they're minimal, and they're not that dungeony. But I also think that that's something that can be improved on. But the sense of exploration felt much closer to Zelda 1, which had you, you know, do things in whatever order. And replaying Zelda 1, as I have for the, uh, that little Game & Watch thing, was in some ways kind of a revelation for me. Not that I didn't remember, but the feeling of like, wow, I can do Dungeon 4 out of order. I can do Dungeon 3 and then 2 and then I can do this and, you know, that, that feeling is really cool. And I really feel like they captured that with Breath of the Wild. So I applaud developers allowing people to complete things. It can fuck with the balancing of a game. And that can be a problem. So, you know, you have like a, a hundred different things you gotta check and see if, if it'll even work. But if it is pulled off. Man, those games are so much fun. Like, like I said, Metroid. And Metroid Dread had a lot of things that were available to do in various weird orders. And it's much appreciated. The, uh, the God of War dude doesn't, um, like Metroid or Zelda and was upset that Zelda won the award from a meaningless award ceremony. Something like that. And then went on to describe that um, there was a part in Zelda Wind Waker that he never got past that was complete shit. And then later um, someone called him out and said, hey, that's not actually in Wind Waker. And then he described another thing that was also not in Wind Waker. So that's been a real shit show. It's a meaningless award. Okay, fine. You don't like Nintendo games. That's cool. Not a lot of people... Well, a lot of people do, but some people don't. But this isn't an Oscar. Fuck the Oscars. This is not an Emmy. I mean, Metroid Dread has an Emmy. Several. Anyway, there's the power gloves. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna... I'm gonna complete this dungeon now. So anyway, you have to rescue very much like in Hyrule Castle, you have to rescue this maiden here. Which is a little weird, because we're in the dark world. Why would... Well... The world may never know. So when you try to take her out of the dungeon, it says, Too bright. This was one of those moments as a kid where I was like, holy shit. Because, so I rescued her, brought her outside. She says, ah, too bright, or something like that. And then she goes back in the dungeon, and then you have to rescue her again. But then I noticed in the top floor, there was a place to bomb. When you bomb, this happens. Too bright. God, I love that. I love a dungeon with a little story. And then you even hear about the the villain named Blind. Like, in the town. 
So there's there's like or you know in I think in Kakariko you hear about it. So the connection to the dark world is established. So there's clues. spammy, but we got it. So there's not really a lot of out-of-order stuff in Link to the Past, but this is a pretty notable example. The formula started getting pretty restrictive for this game, and this would then establish like a whole lot of Zelda tropes going forward. Link, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. As the sages sealed the way to the Dark World, the Knights of Hyrule defended them from the attacks of evil monsters. I heard that the Knights of Hyrule were nearly wiped out in that battle. You were perhaps the last one to carry on the bloodline of the Knights. It is ironic that the last one in the line has the potential to become the hero of legend. Surely you can destroy Ganon. Do you understand? The what? So then, you want to rescue this frog. Ribbit, ribbit, your body did not change. You are not just an ordinary guy, are you? I used to live in Kakariko Town. I wonder what my partner's doing there without me. Ribbit, I have a request of you. Please take me to my partner, please. Ribbit. Is it crying? I think it might be crying. I, I never noticed that before. I see, like, little blue lines. There's, like, blue dots. <laughs> Poor frog. Well, we can rescue the frog first. It's a gnome. Quiet. Happy days are here again. You found my partner. We're very happy now. Drop by here again. At that time, we'll temper your sword perfectly. Hey, you. Welcome. Ask us to do anything. Um, can you make me a cake? No, just temper sword, I guess. Give you a big discount. Ten rupees. Alright, we'll have to keep your sword for a while. Animation, but no sword. Again, just seeing this, and you're like, wait, what? Gotta put magic powder on it. So you still have a chance to solve things on your own in this game. Despite the more restrictive nature of the formula going from Zelda 1 to this. I'm excluding Zelda 2 because that was more of a departure. Blast you for waking me from my deep, dark sleep. I mean, thanks a lot, sir. But now I will get my revenge on you. Get ready for it. Uh, if, is that okay with you, sir? <laughs> I laugh at your misfortune. Now your magic power will drop by one half. Congratulations. Now do your best, even though I'm sure it won't be enough. Have a nice day. That confused me as a child when my reading comprehension was not good. But yeah, magic powder. M uh, magic powder and magic power.
can use more. We're not done yet. Come back after a while. Listen, it's not my fault if a skeleton bone chicken decides to get in the way of my hammer. Another cool secret. Again, I can't really overestimate how cool it was to discover these things. And again, this is before, like, just as the Super Nintendo came out, so gaming was still... This type of gaming was still kind of in its infancy. There it is. Red Sword. Your sword is stronger, you can feel the sheer power flowing through your body. weird that the option to temper it comes up again, but they can't temper it any more than that, so... But, yeah, the sense of... discovery, uh, when you, like, figure out how to do something... That's why this is probably maybe my... Not why. I mean, there's a hundred reasons why I love this game, and it's in my top three. But one of the main reasons is just how many moments I discovered, like, as a child, like a dumb child, on my own, that made me feel smart. <laughs> because you don't know this stuff, and then you know it by discovering it, and it's great. I heard, um, I heard that you know I used to be a thief, right? I'll open a chest for you. Will you keep it a secret from everyone else? Will you please promise? Fourth bottle. Remember, you promised. I mean, I can do different... Like, I can go in different order. ...for a number of things at this point. But the hook shot is pretty... ...pretty fucking necessary. Getting the final sword upgrade, I think, requires that you have... To, I'm not sure 100%. Either you have to get six crystals, or you just have to beat dungeon number six. I kind of... I kind of forgot. These mountains always confuse me. I like that they went out of their way to make a new sound effect for the third sword. Just a little cooler sounding.
Why not? Yeah, hook shot required. I was hoping to get one more heart piece. I know there's ways to do that now. Remember where? Dangerously close to death. Oh, thank God. Well, there's two optional items. One of which I'm going to get. Well, both of which I'm going to get in a minute. Just keep forgetting exactly where I have to fall. Ah, oh, man. Oh, well. This music is pretty great, too. Under... I would say a little underappreciated. Dark World music is celebrated. Not as much this. One of those blocks kind of sounds like Owen Wilson doing wow, slowed down by 20, no, 75%. Wow. piece I need. Not last one, but fourth one. Somewhere. Could this be it? Or I think this is a fairy fountain? This is hookshot required. 
Yeah, I'm up on this mountain a little bit too early, truthfully. <laughs> Time to do Turtle Rock. Lionels. Pig Tower. Pike. The lads again. Wow, your shape didn't change. You got the moon pearl, huh? Let's talk to Ball. You didn't change your shape. You aren't just a normal guy, are you? Damned to an eternity of being kicked around by a dinosaur. Worried that at any moment it could land on the dinosaur's spike. Yeah, that's where... Eh, you know what? You need the magic cape for this. Oh, I say need. You need full health in one fairy. <laughs> Pretty much. There was an optional patch of this Redux version where you could change direction of your Pegasus boot sprint. Like, while you're moving, which you can't do normally, and I didn't use that, I patched that out because that's apparently too broken. I'll get another heart piece soon. Oh, this bird kind of looks like a duck. It looks like a little Pekin duck. And it's strong enough to... It's strong enough to carry Link. Does anyone have a similar problem with their, um... Alexa? Where... She will loudly say, Sorry, something went wrong! Try again in a few minutes. I've tried lowering the notification volume. I've tried unplugging and replugging. I've tried a couple different things. And this fucking thing will wake me up in the middle of the night. It's loud. And I've googled this problem and I have, have had no solutions. If anyone has any idea what the hell's happening or how I can stop this, please... Please send me a message, and I'm not going to bother with the Chris Houlihan room. But man, is that shit annoying. It just happened now, that's why I, I, I am bringing it up. Thank you. 
There it is. See, now I'm wondering if the volume reset, the notification volume. Recently launched Big Fart. Popular skill, ask Pikachu anything you want. Oh. Volume is all the way down, and yet that thing, the notification of sorry something went wrong, is so loud. I wouldn't mind if it was like, kind of low, but it's so loud, it actually has the potential to wake me up. Some may say, well, why even bother? I use it for like, lights and stuff. <laughs> it's convenient. If I had to live without Alexa, I don't know what I would do. Oh wait, I know, I would be fine. Ever notice that that dude's the same in the light world and the dark? Kinda just put that together, just now. Need hookshot. Sorry, something went wrong. What? How dare- No. Profitable story if you pay me 20 rupees. An incredible beauty inside the pyramid. But someone sealed the door, you can't do anything with a standard bomb, they say. This light world, dark world mechanic is so good that Nintendo would go on to reproduce it like seven times. In other series, and even in Zelda, a couple more times. Why didn't Nintendo copyright Dark World? Like, what that time, uh, oh, fuck.
like the time um, loading screen mini games were copyrighted, or stranding games, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Just copyright every mechanic in a video game. Discover something cool and new, copyright. That's what the copyright system is for. That and Mickey Mouse. Let's extend... Extend every couple years so that way Mickey Mouse can never be public domain. Never. Even though Winnie the Pooh apparently, or some property, some long time property is going public domain. Or has already recently. Something, something like that. I don't know what I'm talking about, but yes. Just get every- everything needs to be copyrighted so that way nothing can be... ...shared. There can be no such memes. Take some rupees, I don't- don't tell anyone I gave them to you. Can't really use them. I mean, thanks. Too many rupees, not enough uses for them. Anytime the word Dark World is mentioned or used in a video game, Nintendo is owed $10,000. That would be a cool future. Speaking of cool game mechanics. And just the connection between the light world and the dark world. It's very good. Though I would say the time travel of Ocarina of Time from, you know, seven years prior to seven years later, I'd say it was utilized pretty well. Maybe not to the fullest extent it could have, but for the first N64 Zelda game, and for one of the first 3D action-adventure exploration games like that, of that scale, at that time, I think it still holds up nicely, and still has a lot of really cool ideas, and um, well-executed ones at that. Remember, Zelda 64 could have been the game we got. Which was the one that we saw, like, real early on. Which just looked like... Basic-ass 3D Zelda game, where Link fights skeletons. It could have been just that. Like, go through the eight dungeons as 3D Link, fight skeletons, uh, get the Triforce, and then save Hyrule. But Ocarina went hard. Ocarina did some new shit... ...for the series. And, you know, for gaming, to a large degree. And they were like, no, let's try a time travel mechanic, but also incorporate it into the, like, story of Link. And have it mirror the player, and... It, you know, it was great. The only thing in Ocarina that sometimes doesn't feel amazing is the combat itself. Which I don't think is bad. I think the Z-targeting was a necessity, and I think it really... You know, it worked for the game. It, it was needed. And the combat itself... You know, I don't 100% agree, because there have been people that said that the combat is just boring. I don't think it's boring. I think it's actually sometimes exciting. It's just when you have multiple enemies that have shields, it can get a little annoying. 
it's not as good as like a Dark Soul or um, a Devil May Cry or something like that, but it's it's still pretty good. And for its time, it was better than pretty good. But yeah, even playing Ocarina, like these days, you can see, like, yeah. Sometimes the combat isn't the strongest part of the game. But we also, like I said, we have the advantage of hindsight. And how games have taken that concept and done it better since then. That's why I like Zelda too. I've said it before, but the combat's a lot of fun in Zelda 2. You have high attack and low attack. Some enemies have shields. Some enemies have, have swords that have, like, that are reactive to Link's sword. The puzzle solving is almost non-existent, but the combat is fun. This game. I think was also uh, the right move for the Zelda series in regards to, like, sword play, which... Nothing, like, crazy. It's just sword. But it feels good. The physics of it are good. What I like about it most is, compared to Zelda 1, you have a, a range of attack. I mean, even compared to Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening had it on a 90-degree angle. But, you get a full, like, kind of sword swipe in this one. That Crusader of Senti game for Genesis, it's like a Zelda-like. I've been meaning to play that game, and one day I very well may. It was the Genesis's answer to, like, this game. The only problem I have with it is the sword swipes... Well, I mean, I haven't played much of it, but... I'm sure there's other problems, and I'm sure there's other really, you know, cool things, appealing things. People really like that game. However... The sword is kind of sluggish. I don't know how that would feel for the whole game. I like that this game is, like, kind of fast. And I remember playing that, I was like, oh, this feels a little slow. But... You get so used to... This game that other games that are similar might feel a little weird. But still, I want to try it and see if that's even an issue. It might be a non-issue. There's a trope that any water palace water dungeon in a Zelda game sucks. I think the Ancient Cistern in Skyward Sword is absolutely great. But the Water Temple in Ocarina is definitely a pain in the ass. It's not too bad, it's just a lot of menu time for the boots and a lot of confusion, but I don't think it's as bad. I think it's actually a very well-designed dungeon, just not my favorite by a long shot. Um, I think Majora's Mask water... Majora's Mask's water dungeon is even worse than the one in Ocarina. Princess, I don't remember. 
Wind Waker doesn't really have a specifically water-themed one, if I'm not mistaken, because, I mean, the whole game is water. But, um, yeah, I don't remember Twilight Princess, like, what the water dungeon there was. I it would long hallway, long, hmm, long hallway. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, I think that was the one with the big room where you can change the staircase. Uh, I don't think that one was all that bad. Vague memories. Even though I played the HD version a couple years ago, it's kind of not there. Memory's just not there at the moment. The other 2D Zelda games, I can't really quite remember. I mean... The one on, uh, let me think. Link's Awakening. You have to dive. It's as annoying as this one, maybe. Which is to say, it's not too bad. Hmm. And I remember vaguely the Oracle ones, even though I just played those. Cool memory. Too many dungeons to keep track of. Imagine if I did a top 10 list. Top 10 water dungeons in on Zelda. Number one. And I'm, I just, uh, that one where you um, go underwater with the flippers in the Oracle games, that one I think was okay. Number two. So, I'm gonna vote for... what's your worst water palace in Zelda? But my vote, I think, might be the Ocarina... Uh, sorry, the Majora's Mask one. I think it might even be a little bit more annoying than the Ocarina one. Especially in the 3DS version, they fixed it a little bit. Not fixed, but made it a little bit more... A, you can keep the boots... ...like, to equip them whenever you need to. So that's helpful. And B, they added some, like, guides, some, like, um, to, to show you where the water levels go and what rooms take you there. So it's just a little easier, a little easier to parse the information required without playing the guessing game and getting lost and having to remember the exact hallway. Which is great for me. Good faces. This may not be my favorite dungeon, but it's not too bad. It is a little, little bit of a pain in the ass. It's minimal pain in the ass. Like it's the type of ass pain that you just sat on your ass a little too long. Not, like, on the toilet, but, you know, in, like, a decent, but not amazing chair. That's the kind of pain in the ass this game is for me. Or this level, this world, this... ...thing, this dungeon. I forget if this opens the other one, too. Yeah. Beep. 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 Bieber. Beep. 
How is it that a name could match a person so well? This guy's a beeb. We just got rid of the beeping. Fucking tadpoles. Still kind of semi-struggling with this dungeon all these years later. Semi-struggling. I got this. Under control. There's no heart pieces in this dungeon or anything like that, right? No. I don't think there are very many heart pieces in any dungeon, if at all. Just outside the second one. But, like, if I miss a couple rooms in a dungeon, I'm not going to be gutted. I think Nintendo should retroactively add amiibo support to every video game they've produced. Okay, that's a horrible idea, but what if they did? What would be the amiibo functionality for this game? Use Link amiibo, get double powerful sword for 20 minutes? Crenando amiibo makes game harder. Enemies hit twice as hard. Zelda amiibo plays the lullaby, and then you get a fairy. Tingle amiibo takes 20 of your rupees. Use it again, takes 50. Use it again, takes 200. Use it another time, we'll take all of your rupees and then give you a little tingle statue for your home. It's like tingle is... I'm making tingle into the Wario of the Zelda universe, even though that's not really the case. Oh god, is Tingle Link's Wario? I don't know how to feel about that. It's not quite the same thing, but but, but Link's heart is different than Mario's heart. I don't... I, you, well, hey. Link, because of you, I can escape the clutches of the evil monsters. Triforce will grant the wishes of whoever uh, touches it. Uh, as long as that person lives, uh, that's why it was hidden in the sacred realm. Only a select few know uh, of its location. I don't know why I'm reading it like this either. I really don't. I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. How to return to the light world. Remember that you have magical powers which can only which only the hero can make the most of. Other magical warping points like the one you saw in Death Mountain. By using them you can go between two worlds and find the evils hidden in the dark world. You are the only one who can destroy Ganondorf. The thief. No. Ganon. The evil king of darkness.
April. I was just thinking how nice it is that randomizers exist to breathe new life into games like this. But not just randomizers, but randomizers with lots of extra settings. One of these trees is friendly. Wow, I haven't seen a normal person in a few hundred years. Let me talk to you for a while. I once lived in the Lost Woods until the day I wandered into a magical transporter. The power of the Dark World quickly turned me into this tree shape. I guess the two forests... Hang on. ...are connected with each other. You know, a few hundred years. Ganon has not had the Triforce for a few hundred years, has he? It kind of makes me wonder if time moves differently in the Dark World. Like, maybe Ganon got it a month ago, but for them, the Dark World has been here for hundreds of, hundreds of years. I don't, uh, I don't know. I could be... Laurelly confused. Probably also do Dungeon 5 earlier to get the um, better tunic to take less damage. I wonder how early you can do that. I, I guess you need the ice rod for that, or the fire rod, so yeah, it's probably not worth going too far out of your way for that one. Yeah, this is Dungeon 3. I mean, I know there are people who are watching this that have never played Zelda or Link to the Past before, but... This dungeon's weird because it has a number of entrances. The Lost Woods in the Dark World are basically all one interconnected portion of this dungeon. So that's where the item is. Gonna need the, uh, big key, of course. This is a cool dungeon. I always kind of re re uh, not regret, uh, dread this dungeon in my mind, and then I enjoy it when I get to it. Just a little confusing. I thought there was a door there. No, oh, that sucks. Never mind. Okay, so I need two keys. Still a really creative way to approach a dungeon where it's just not one single entrance. Like playing this game in like as close to vanilla as possible all these years later is making me 
appreciate its game design and how varied it is. Like, this is stuff you, you just don't think about when you're a kid, and that's why it just kind of becomes a favorite. As opposed to... You know, just some emotional attachment I have to it, which I also do, but... I've also spent years playing terrible games. And some mediocre ones. Lots of great ones. But with all that information that I have in my head now, <laughs> I'm able to do a little bit more thinking about what makes a game great. Hey everybody, it's me, Rick Beato, on today's What Makes This Game Great, Link to the Past. I'm glad Beato was keeping the, uh, the love of 90s music alive. He just did a video about, was the 90s as good as I thought it was? And he's like, yeah. And he just plays music and, just, and like, talks. And someone was like, the 90s are trash compared to the 80s. He's like, nah, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't quite as clear-cut as that, because he loves the 80s music as well. But the fact that he got to interview Sting, and he's a big, like, 80s... He has, there's a ton of 80s bands that that dude likes. But, yeah, I think you, you could tell that he's just passionate about music, and I'm glad that there's a YouTuber, even though he's, like, just a dad. Just some... someone's dad. I like that he's knowledgeable. He has a lot of good topics. He listens to a lot of today's music, and will critique it a bit, but also be fair and talk about what he likes. And yet, I think it's, it's good to have people that are getting others into like why music can be great and why it doesn't have to just be you know a fun radio song which is cool you know fun radio songs are are nice and it takes skill to write a fun radio song but there's also other reasons music exists and why it's uh, so much of that music that i grew up with that i still revere this is so important to me. Wait, is this room pointless? Hmm. I think I think I just wasted a key in that room. Huh. I forgot not to waste that key. Oh, I do have the big key, I just realized. Music opinions are very subjective, and, you know, you like what you like, and that's gonna be a thing that you, you know, I've grown up, I have strong opinions of what I like, but I also won't take away from someone what they enjoy, even if I really don't like Imagine Dragons. Now, the thing is, the thing is about a lot of music, is even though it's totally subjective to compare, like, Bach to whatever pop music is on the charts right now, Island Boys or whatever, <laughs> because someone would love the Island Boys but not love Bach or Mozart. And you can't take that away from them. You can't force them to recognize something from, like, Led Zeppelin and say, hey, this is much more meaningful 
to me than Island Boys is to you. That's not how that's not how that works. The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. You can't do that. But I think intent can sometimes be interesting. Someone might may like the Island Boys may write a song and they're expressing themselves in a way that they know where maybe you would say, oh, they just made that song to make a quick buck. And I, while I'm more inclined to believe that for a lot of pop music, because that's the hustle of it, and also a lot of the music is very samey, and a lot of it sounds lyrically and musically like, a, you know, there's also people that have writers that write for them to make the most effective song possible to be catchy and to make the charts. So that you can probably quantify. What you can't quantify is how much that song may mean to someone. And that's why being a music snob about like what other people's tastes are does not really work all that great. But I will say that I respect artists that write their own music and try to do something interesting with music that we haven't heard 150 times. I like when you're listening to a, a song, like, a, you know, and there's like a weird, like it skips, a, it misses a beat and then comes back. Or like when there's an interesting chord structure or like an interesting rhythm, something weird with the melody that I haven't heard before. Or even if I've heard it, maybe all of that together with some catchiness and you have a song that maybe you can listen to and really enjoy and you don't have to like you know study it like you're a, a fucking architect studying building like plans because that might not be a whole lot of fun but also something that you can listen to but also maybe get a little something out of and be like oh that's interesting lyrically or musically i haven't heard that before You know, I'm always searching for some interesting melodies. I don't think I found one yet, but maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe one day. Um, I, and that's the fun part of music for me, for writing it. But I like artists that write their own music and try something a little different. I respect Lady Gaga, even if I don't listen to her music. I think she has some amazing, amazing chops as a singer and as a pianist and also as a writer. And that's something that... I wish there were more, there was more of at the moment. Even if it's not rock, I don't mind. But I, I just, you know, I like when people use me, when people have music in their life for the same reason I do, and when, you know, things are a little fucked up, and uh, you can always turn to your instrument. That's um, the type of music I tend to enjoy. I can kind of almost sense it from how it sounds sometimes. This is a, a long rant, and it may m make very little sense to some, but I don't know, just stream of consciousness. This is where the conversation with myself <laughs> has gone. And... Anyway, I, I appreciate that Rick Beato is a popular YouTuber that gets a lot of views, that also turns people on to how music is made, how it's written, different types of instruments, different great bands, even some music like that I've never heard of before. He's kind of exposed me to a couple things, so it's nice that that exists, where radio does not really exist, and if it does, it kind of just plays the most homogenized versions of whatever has a proven track record of being popular and therefore will attract many streams, downloads. And I think that's also why music is kind of stagnated a bit. I'm sure people would tell me, Vinny, it hasn't stagnated. In, in a popular sense, maybe it has. Maybe the stuff that's top 40 I mean, Sting had an interesting thing to say about it, too.
how minimal music is at the moment in, in a pop sense. And it is. It's very... It can be very minimal. It can be very... Let's stick with these three chords. Repeat. I guess punk music was that. But punk music... One of the reasons I like punk music is it had... I guess a purpose... Of like... Anger. And like, yeah, we're, we're fighting against... Uh, playing... Well, I, what am I even saying? Punk music, there is a lot of anger and, and like, hey, let's change things. And also, we don't need to be great musicians to have fun and play music. Sorry, I'm ranting. Gotta get my thoughts out, but at the same time, I want to just stop talking, and I will do so. Do you know the prophecy of the Great Cataclysm? This is the way I heard it. If a person who has an evil heart gets a Triforce, a hero is destined to appear. He alone must face the person who began the Great Cataclysm. If the evil one destroys the hero, nothing can save the world from his wicked reign. Only a person of the Knights of Hyrule who protected the Hylian royalty can become the hero. You are of, you are of their bloodline, aren't you? Then you must rescue Zelda without fail. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you for coming to my music talk. Also, there's a lot of great music out there that's just not popular. That's it's just hidden. You know, stuff that you you're only going to find on Bandcamp. And I'm guilty of not seeking that music out. One of the reasons I don't is because there's so fucking much of it. It almost becomes overwhelming to think about. I've always heard great music, like in games or, you know, in a movie, and I'm like, what the hell is that? And then you find out it's just, you know, someone I've never heard of before. And I want to find more of that, but at the same time, it's it, it becomes an exhausting task. And that's why Spotify's algorithm is sometimes great. Because it throws, like, five popular songs at you and one maybe you've never heard of. And then you're like, oh shit, I want to check that artist out. Because it's similar. So the algorithm bad because not human, but also algorithm good because exposed to new music that's similar to good music that you like. But yeah, I mean, we've reached the point where there are so many movies, so much music, so many books, so much creativity and art in this world that you could spend your entire lifetime listening to every band of every genre every artist of every genre and still run out of life before you get to listen to all of it. That's why I'm grateful people like my music, or at least seek it out. Like, and give it a chance. Because... You know, you could be listening to anything, and then you find this... This the, who does the spin in Mario voice, the streamer, this YouTuber, whatever you want to call me at this point. You're like, oh, I'll eh, I'll check it out. Why not? But you know, there's artists that are way better than me that do not have the the audience at all, and have spent years and years perfecting their craft, who don't get that level of attention and won't. Oh wait, I was here already, right? Yeah. But I guess luck is kind of always factored into it. There's there's a lot of bands, a lot of artists from the 60s and 70s that I'm sure got shafted. And we only know about the ones that <clears throat> were given a chance with the record label. 
It's just then there were less around that we're aware of, but a whole lot more that just did not get record deals or were totally ignored or like we're not given a chance. Because it could go either way. I mean, on some level, a record label has an obligation to make money, of course. So if they pick up an artist, you know, and they're taking a chance because they're like really creative. Maybe they have a couple amazing songs, but the guys are like, you know, the people in the band are just not like motivated or don't actually write new music. And suddenly you just signed you know, $50,000 over to these people that are just gonna drink and smoke weed <laughs> and not re record any new music. So I'm sure, like, the people wanting to scoop up any band that sounded like the Beatles at that time also had to be like, well, are these people gonna make us our money back? Can they even write a decent song? Are they gonna, like, break up within a month of us signing them? And sometimes... Those choices did not work out, and you have one-hit wonders, which the movie That Thing You Do is really great, by the way. Recommend that. But you have one-hit wonders, you have bands that maybe do one album and then broke up. Anyway. Yeah, it's, to me, I find this stuff very interesting. Clearly. As much as things have changed in the world of, like, music, and people are like, oh, it sucks to be an artist now, I'm actually kind of grateful that I don't have to leave my house most, uh, or do a tour to be discovered. Like, I'm pretty fucking happy I can just go to a recording studio. Hmm, I forgot about this room. I'm happy that I can go to a recording studio, make some music, release an album on a yearly schedule almost, every year and a half, whatever, and not have to tour, and not have to worry about if a record label wants a deadline or if they want me to do something different it's kind of great like sure I'm not a rock star I'm not famous but I kind of don't want to be after you know uh, internet famous because it's it's not really healthy for one's psyche slash ego it can be healthy for one's wallet but, uh, it doesn't really... doesn't always, uh, work with personalities that have some issues going in. So, on some level, m maybe that's not a, a thing for everyone. And maybe I don't necessarily need that. Maybe I'm just happy that, uh, that I have the audience I have. And I guess, you know, I guess that's okay. It's kind of nice to have. So there's a lot of good stuff about being... current year with, um, streaming platforms and shit. So this dungeon has had a change, as it is now... There's one room that was a huge pain in the ass. This was always one of my least favorites. I got so confused as a kid. I barely understood what I was supposed to do a, a good chunk of the time. I would get lost. That one room was super confusing. Again, mushy, mushy pea brain. It hasn't changed much. These look like mushy peas. Anyway. The, uh, GBA version just fixed that room a little bit, and made the backtracking a little less annoying. And... 
I think that's a great change. Also, want to see something cool? That was pretty cool. You notice when I'm not live, my conversation veers towards slightly more sincere, as opposed to, yeah, cock! Which, I can be sincere live, and I can also be, yeah, cock, when I'm not live. I just think it skews a little bit more towards the jokey stuff <laughs> when I'm live, because I know the chat is... You know, they're all there and riled up and they got way too much energy and I so do I. And it turns into... Yeah, cock! But I think both. I like being both. I like being wacky. And I like also talking about other random shit that's on my mind. Of course, people have different preferences and want me to be different people. Some people want me to be 24-7. Some people want Mario 24-7. I think there's a whole contingent of people that also like maybe the combination of all the stuff. Eh, whatever I am to you, I, I have no idea. I stopped trying to think about it. How people view me, how people perceive me and what they want from me. It, there's no point. There's just no point in trying to think about that. I mean, you could, but then... Really... You gotta think about you. And I think, uh, do more what works for you, as opposed to what you think will work for others. The- maybe the best result is doing both. I still think, you know, finding a healthy balance that works for you and doesn't make you miserable is, is important. So sometimes you will get, suck this cock clean, and sometimes you'll get, listen, life can be difficult. <laughs> and that's why I am sponsored by um, dollarcockclub.com. time for me to eat food for dinner as I'm recording this in the early evening and I'm trying to figure out I didn't do my meal thing this week because of holidays so now I have to figure out nor did I buy any groceries which I think I probably should do oh it's this moment the famous moment you might want to, uh, look up the clip on my <laughs> channel of the, the animation of me trying to go in there, if you're unfamiliar with it. I don't even know how you could find that. Wow, that sucked. I wasn't even beeping. God damn, how much damage did that thing do? key. Yeah, this room was slightly modified. I don't remember how exactly, but it, it's modified.
it sucks that fast food is just, like, mostly trash for you. Because it tastes so fucking good. But it's the conven- it's the convenience of it. Oh man, the convenience of just being able to grab a food in, like, four minutes is so great. I just wish there were, like, healthier options that isn't just salad, crunchy water. Because I enjoy salad, not as much as George Lucas, but I enjoy. It's just, I, I guess... If fast food had slightly healthier options, somehow... Maybe I would go for that more often. It's like, yeah, I don't really feel like cooking, don't feel like going to a restaurant, don't feel like waiting. But yet, the only option is big, greasy fatberg. And man, does it taste good, but fuck, man, I don't- I don't want to feel like shit after eating the fatberg. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Because feeling like shit after Fatberg doesn't also... It also includes, like... I start getting, like, mentally not... ...happy. If I eat too much, like, fast food, like, several days in a row. I don't really know how to explain it or why this phenomenon happens. I'm sure there's, uh, nutritionists that have very good reasoning. I- I wish I was a floating brain. I understand my friend from all those years ago now about the floating brain thing. I don't like thinking about human body things very often. Like, I, I take my vitamins and, and all that stuff and I'm on, like, probiotics at the moment to try to rebuild my gut biome, which is a disgusting thing to think about, but, you know... I'm doing that because I was just on antibiotics and now I want to build that back up and be healthy. However... If I could just be, like, a floating voice on the internet, where people... ...could just watch the videos, and I can be that voice, and not be, like, bound to the human realm... I, ...that would be cool, too. I don't, I don't want to think about bodily things and weirdness and... ...what's in my gut. Fuck that shit. I just want to create galaxies and music and play video games. I think the create galaxies part is probably the most reasonable of all the requests. And I want to know... I want to know about uh, ancient aliens, <laughs> if they're real. Just let me know. I don't trust the guy with the bird hair. I don't know if he believes in, in the shit he's saying sometimes myself. Himself. Skeleton needs bomb to be fully destroyed, because those bone... Those bone. I don't even need to kill that skeleton. Important room. Even the little, like, rooms like that, like, the, just the layout, I'm like, alright, oh, that's important, why is that important?
Those bone. Did you ever just randomly smell garlic and it wasn't you? Weird, right? I think it's just Italian psychosis. Don't don't mind me. to go all the way this way? I kind of like Misery Mire maybe even a little bit more than this one. It is pretty miserable, though. Oh god, I, uh, I have a feeling I went the wrong way. Or went a very roundabout way. Bum 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 ba 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 bum bum. Lazy attempt at singing roundabout. You know, this real time weapon change, while an amazing innovation that should have been copyrighted, of course. <sighs> if I had just paused the game and switched. Or just fought them with my sword. That would have been one less death. Is it this way? I hate going down these stairs. Oh god. It's so much easier than I think it is, though. Every single time, I'm like, this is gonna take forever, and then it takes two seconds. Yes. New look, new Link. I like the, uh, the autumn colors on Link. It's like usually blue tunic also has blue cap, but this Link is like, nah, now nah, we'll go golden cap. Why do these skeletons have green swords? I always found that odd. I'm fine with Link's cap being gold, or like, yellowish, but I draw the line at green swords, sorry. bunny. Am I really out of fairies already? Wow. For a pro gamer, I'm really pretty fucking terrible at video games that I've played a million and five times.
There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's the room. That's the real pain in the ass. Now I remember. You know what else is a pain in the ass? This room. Oh, man, do I love ice physics. No, we're going upstairs? I don't think we're supposed to... Upstairs is bad. Why are we going upstairs? I guess upstairs goes this way. So, no, I think this is correct. I think this is correct, yeah. Seems about right. Yep. Look at these things' faces. God damn, those are some faces. Yes. Must have magic before entering. Oh wait, oh, maybe you could use the sword for that, I'm not sure. It seems like you'd need the magic rod, but what if you don't have magic? Do you just soft lock? It's weird that I can almost... When I'm in this room, I almost remember what it was like, where I was, when I first played this game and first defeated that boss and how good it felt. Almost. Not quite. Link, because of you I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. They say the Hylian people are controlled uh, sorry, they say the Hylian people controlled mysterious powers, as did the Seven Sages, but the blood of the Hylians has become thin over time. We who carry the blood of Seven Sages do not possess strong power anymore, either. Our powers will increase if we mix the courage of the Knights with the wisdom of the Sages. Only a short time remains until the gate at the castle, linking the worlds, opens completely. If you defeat Ganon, this world will vanish, and the Triforce will wait for a new holder. I believe in you. Good luck. Alright. So, the awkward middle dungeons have been completed, and Misery Mire remains, Turtle Rock, and then Ganon's Tower. So... That'll probably be just one. I would think... I did three hours... on the first video, or stream. Two hours here, and then maybe like a two and a half hour or so. Probably more than that. Probably... It would be about three, if I did... another one.
all the way through if I don't... Well, it depends on if I do all the extra shit. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to stop in just a second. I was just going to um, see if I can get the power. I think you can get Bombos. Bombos? Here. Please hold a moment. So I was muted, and I just noticed it, and the reason I was muted is because I had a phone call that no one answered or spoke. So fuck that phone call. What I said was, the medallions <laughs> in this game have magical powers, which is probably why the ones in Ocarina of Time originally had magical powers, but they got rid of them, and then I mentioned that there's a demo of, like, there's a recreation of Zelda Ocarina of Time beta from Space World, which I'm not sure how they recreated. I'm gonna have to find out because I want to play it one day, but I don't know if they used references or they used a bunch of um, stuff that was already available. I'm gonna have to find out before I play it. While I play it, I can deliver the information properly. Also, I said, fuck that vulture, because that vulture gets killed every time you get the medallion, and then Bombos destroys it if you don't already. Thank you for watching Link to the Past. This has been fun, and I hope you had uh, an interesting day watching this nonsense. Um, it's good. It's a great game. Uh, I'm happy that people are enjoying the playthrough. Take care, thank you, and see you around. Hopefully I won't be muted for a couple minutes next time. Goodbye.